Hello dear students, welcome to the second video in the series Organic Chemistry, Some Basic Concepts. In this series of videos, uh, my attempt is to make the fundamentals of organic chemistry a bit more clearer and hows and whys of organic compounds or organic chemical reactions. We know that organic chemical reactions are very different from the inorganic ones where you involve metals and non-metals. Here, there are certain basic uh, fundamentals involved and if you understand those fundamentals at the beginning itself, then organic chemistry becomes a bit more easier to understand. In the first video in this series, I dealt with inductive and electromeric effect as to how they affect and what are these effects, how they affect the behavior of a compound. The third effect that we are dealing with in this series is the mesomeric effect. Meso, origin is middle. The word meso stands for middle or intermediate. So here, mesomeric, an element or a compound behaving in an intermediate manner, in an, uh, neither an inductive nor an electromeric. That is how I would state. So I would highly recommend that you see the first video or understand the inductive and the electromeric effect in order to understand the mesomeric effect more better. Mesomeric effect or resonance effect or resonance. Here I am not talk, going to talk about resonance. That will be the third video in the series. First let's talk about mesomeric effect. In inductive effect, you read that it is caused due to electronegativity difference between carbon and the other atom. Electromeric effect, you read that the pi electrons are involved and there is temporary dislocation of the electrons due to the presence of a reagent mesomeric effect that means wherein either a set of two pi bonds is involved or pi bond at a lone pair of electrons is involved here either the atom or the group which is attached to a conjugated system what is a conjugated system is a system of alternate double and single bonds Simple, this is a conjugated system. Now in a conjugated system, if you have a highly electronegative or electropositive group involved, how does it affect the behavior of the electrons? Very simple example you've taken over here of an organic compound called as phenol. C6H5OH represented in its aromatic form, in its benzene structure, we have OH over here. Oxygen has two lone pair of electrons. Now it happily wants to give away or decrease its burden. So it shares two lone pair of electrons with the carbon atom over here. When it shares its carb the electrons with the carbon atom, what will happen is now it is short of the octate. So itself it becomes positively charged and the bond between carbon and oxygen becomes double. Now, if you see the original structure, this is carbon. So let us suppose this has developed a double bond. Double bond was originally there and there's a bond over here. So carbon in turn gets to have five bonds, which is not possible. So what happens over here is the double bond over here, the pi electron cloud over here moves to one of the carbon atom here. So we have the first carbon atom acquiring a negative charge. In other words, polarity has developed over here. There are positive and negative ends in the same molecule because of the donation of lone pair of electrons by the oxygen atom. This is what we call as mesomeric effect. Since this group is releasing electrons towards the conjugated system, and in turn acquiring a positive charge, we call it as the plus M or the plus R effect. See the second case, where we've taken the example of a very common organic compound and that is benzaldehyde. So we've got 
CHO group which I have written in an expanded form of word here as C double bond O H. This is its original structure form. Here oxygen being more electronegative because its lone pair of electrons is already used up in forming the double bonds over here. So it being more electronegative it pulls the electron cloud towards itself. With the result it acquires a negative charge. Now this carbon in turn is left with 1, 2 and 3 bonds. It can't survive like that. It needs 8 electrons to complete its octet. So what happens here is it pulls electrons from the conjugated system. With the result now my first carbon here is short of electrons which we indicate by a positive charge. Whereas this carbon develops a double bond with the carbon atom of the ring. So we again have polarity in the molecule. CHO group has served to pull electrons from the benzene ring and in turn itself acquired a negative charge. Hence this is called minus M or minus R effect. This is just for simplicity I have taken similar structures. Now as we said this is this effect if you see can be transmitted along the chain. Now this carbon is positive charge so it tries to satisfy itself. It can pull electrons from here and give us another form of the same structure. In order to depict this we have taken a very simple example of a straight chain structure wherein fluorine it gives its lone pair of electrons to the carbon with the result they develop a positive uh, sorry a double bond between them now the carbon carbon double bond cannot survive because you cannot have one two three four five bonds for carbon carbon cannot form five bonds it's tetravalent so what happens here is the lone pair of, sorry, the pi bond of electrons is, pi electrons is withdrawn by the second carbon atom. We have denoted these by the dots over here. Now again, this will be unstable because carbon is not very electronegative. So what happens over here is carbon forms a double bond with the next set of carbon. So one, two, three. The bond which was earlier between 1 and 2 carbon atoms now shifts to carbon number 2 and 3. That is how they develop a bond. If the chain is long, this effect can continue. In other words, this effect gets transmitted along a chain just like inductive effect. It involves pi bond, that is two pi bonds, or pi bond and lone pair of electrons. It does not wait for a reagent to come and behave. It's an effect which is inherent in the molecule and that is how it affects the physical as well as the chemical behavior of that particular compound. It is very, very effective in conjugated compounds as we have seen over here. Last point we have over here is there are two forms plus m effect groups and minus m effect groups. We also call this effect as resonance effect because it is this effect which gives us to what we call as the resonating forms or the phenomena of resonance which you come across very often when you do the organic study. Everywhere you'll find that this is more stable because of resonance. This uh, behaves uh, or is it, it is able to react because of resonance. So all these reasons we shall be doing in the next video some basic concepts part 3 where I shall be talking in detail about resonance. For a write up on this please refer to Google site learning chemistry is fun where we've loaded uh, PDF formats of the same lecture in written form so that it's easier for you to reference to have a reference when you are not online. All the best to you.